Well, good evening, my friends. Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you with another live CGC unboxing. That's right. Two boxes to share with you tonight. Guys, I'm Kevin the Comic Doctor. I'm a comic book presser. I'm also an authorized CGC dealer located way up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And this is a virtual show and tell. A show and tell of what you may ask. Well, comic books. Everyone here loves comic books. And one of the main things I do as a CGC authorized dealer is I send client books into CGC down in Sarasota, Florida to be graded and then shipped all the way back here. And when they get here, uh, I share them with you. I, I let you guys see what's coming through the shop. Uh, you know, so if you are a lover of comic books and everything uh, to do with fandom and comics in general, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And you know what? By hitting that subscribe button, what actually happens, it actually entitles you. That's pretty important. It actually gives you the opportunity to, 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 to come over to our chat room, some guys over there right now, and talk with us. And to talk with me, I'll answer any questions you might have pertaining to uh, the hobby in general, comic book pressing and cleaning and grading, anything. Um, so please consider subscribing to the channel and joining in the conversation as well. Guys, uh, look, uh, let's start off. the off, we got some great books to start with, my friends. This one here is a book from Carlo. And uh, you know how I do like to... Uh, I'm trying to find my overhead cam here, guys. I do like to to start off with 9 eights. And guys, this is not a fluke. This just kind of happened. Boom, 9.8, makes it Spider-Man 300. Uh, Carlo came to the shop a few, uh, about a month ago with this, and he has a second copy as well. Equally as nice, but I decided not to send them at the same time because this one was slightly nicer than the other one. I thought if they went in at the same time, maybe that grader would give the other one a 9.6 or something like that. And they both deserve to be a 9.8. In fact, this one here, we're talking about 9.9. .9. This one here is a beautiful, beautiful copy, so congrats on that, Carlo. You got your 9.8. Next, we have another amazing Spider-Man book. We have a ASM 188 and an 8.5 white pager with uh, a custom label as well, which is pretty cool. And you guys saw the thumbnail. I wasn't joking. Here we go, guys. Amazing Fantasy 15 and a 2.0 first appearance of Spider-Man. Uh, guys, there's a bit of a story with this one here. Uh, as you'll notice, there's a little notation here, and it says... Coupon missing from page number nine. Hey, Kev, how did that get a blue label? Well, I'll tell you. When this book came in, it had, like it says, uh, the, the coupon was clipped out. To me, the book looked like a four, four and a half maybe. I don't think a five, but a four, four and a half. Uh, it's got a lot of heavy creasing up here. So that's where I kind of I kind of left it in that in that area. Anyways. What I did is I contacted CGC and, and, and I said, listen, is it possible to, to have that coupon clipping taken into consideration and take a hit on the grade? Like give it the real grade, taking into consideration that, that coupon is missing. And they said they do it on a, on, on a per uh, you know, situation basis. Um, so I wrote a letter to the grader. I said, this is what I'd like to do. And you know what? They went ahead, went, went ahead with it. I was hoping it was going to come back at least a 2.5, but it came back a 2 nonetheless. But that's a true 2. It is missing that, uh, that coupon. It's as though, imagine uh, a piece you know, missing here, you know, or a piece missing over here. Uh, it doesn't affect the Spider-Man story. It does affect the second story in the in the in the in the because as you know, AF fifteen doesn't just have a Spider-Man story. And it's got a I think it's had three stories in it actually. This uh, it, it affects I think the second story slightly. It just takes away from the title page a little bit. But anyways, a great copy of AF fifteen. Uh, glad it came through the shop. We don't see AF fifteens enough. It's just a damn expensive book. And guys, you know, we're on the we're on the topic of Spider-Man. Let's get to it. Before we get over to the uh, chat room, a lot of guys here now. Treasury Editions here. Brian's here. How you doing? Mike Evans is here as well. How you doing? Robert's here. And Joey Coco is in the house. A lot of you guys are here. Carlos here now as well. Listen, let's talk about Spider-Man because that was something else I also want to talk about was last week you talked about Hulk. Uh, you know, what was a fa your favorite Hulk uh, rendition or, or version of the Hulk? Today we're going to talk about the most, uh, your favorite versions or iterations of Hulk. Spider-Man. Hey, we've got an AF-15 right there. We might as well talk about that for a few minutes. And to join me in that conversation, I invited longtime client and uh, subscriber to the channel, Marco. Marco, are you there? Hey, I'm here, Kev. How are you Not doing? Bad. Thanks. Thanks for coming by. No problem. Thank you for having me. I know it was just a... your friendly neighborhood uh, opinionated uh, collector. That's right. That's right. I thought, you know, I, guys, I told you I want to get some of you guys on here. And, I, and Marco was at the shop not too long ago. And 
we always get into heated debates because he likes the Marvel stuff and I don't like a lot of it. <laughs> so we go back and forth. But we both agree. We both love Spider-Man. So I thought I'd reach out to Marco and he graciously accepted my invitation. And we're going to talk about our favorite versions of Spider-Man. Uh, I put some up here on the screen. I don't know if you can see it or not, Marco, but we have the 1960s Spider-Man cartoon. Mm -hmm. We have the 1970s short-lived uh, series. Of course, we've got all the most recent Spider-Man and Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland, and Tobey Maguire. The 1990s Spider-Man cartoon and even Into the Spider-Verse there we have. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's more, right? There's a lot more. I'll start with you. I'll give you my two cents worth in a few moments. What, what, what some of your favorite versions of Spider-Man? So... I mean, if we're talking all-time favorite, I think Tom Holland's really amazing. He's, like, live-action-wise, just great. But for me, if we're going to go back to what makes me love Spider-Man, it's a 1990s uh, Spider-Man. It's just amazing. Uh, you know, I was already watching the X-Men uh, animated series, and then Spider-Man comes out, and uh, just really great. Really great. And then, you know, as a kid, you... When, at least when I was a kid, you know, you're, you're five or six and you're watching those old, old 60s Spider-Man where, uh, where Spider-Man sounds like he's 85, not a teenager. Yes, well, I'll tell you, that that is my real first exposure to Spider-Man was the 1960s cartoon. And I think I had this conversation last week with Andrew about how it was that cartoon that kind of, uh, uh, kind of, kind of exposed me to the allure of Spider-Man, his history, his origin. And of course, they had a lot of fun playing with all of his rogues gallery because we saw the Green Goblin and Doc Ock and the Lizard and the Scorpion. They were all on there. And they were closely, very closely, you know, um, they're following the comics quite closely. So that was kind of a, uh, a really cool thing to see. And a little bit of, I don't know, if, that was, I think, produced up in Toronto too, if I remember correctly. Is that, do you know uh, The 60s one? Yeah. Um, I have no idea. I mean, wouldn't surprise me looking at that animation. Well, uh, I, maybe, you know, a Hanna-Barbera or a, a Deke, sure. I don't know. I forget the production company, but I believe it was up in Toronto. Again, I could be wrong here. I do know the, 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 the voice actor that played Spider-Man, Peter Parker, was a Torontonian. And, and um, I think he actually came to some of the fan expos, you know, when he was still alive, I think he passed away in the last few years. But you know, in the nineteen late in the early aughts, he was doing. Uh, he kind of, they kind of dug him up, and he was doing a lot of you know comic show appearances. So he was a Torontonian, and I, I did not realize the entire show was produced up in Toronto. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think it was. I looked that up, anyways. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. So many of uh, those Marvel cartoons over the years were Canadian productions. Yeah. So de definitely, uh, definitely voice actors, animation, definitely a lot was done up here. Now, the 1990s one you're talking about, that's the one with the picture of, I think I have on there with all the different sp the versions of Spider-Man. Um, now, that's the one that had the same Spider-Man opening opening as the old one, but it was more techno. It was like Spider-Man. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, like exactly. Lady. That's the one, yeah, yeah. I watched that one too. That was not too bad. And, and that one introduced people to Venom and Carnage, I think, as well, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, they had Venom, they had Carnage, um, they did the whole rooms gallery. I mean, it, the last one I remember is that they did a Secret Wars, which is just amazing. The original Secret Wars. Oh, I didn't and know And they that. brought in Doctor Doom and Magneto and the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. It was really well done. Wow, that's all. I didn't even know they did that on that show. I, I didn't watch as religiously, but I, I remember... The other one that we watched that, as a kid, a lot of maybe you guys out there can agree or remember this was again Spider Man and his amazing friends, uh, 19, early 1980s. I, I love that one because it did have a couple of episodes. The very first episode had, you know, kids dressed up like it was, it was, it took place, it was, it was a, uh, a school dance, like a costume party. And you had guys dressed up like, you know, Captain America and uh, Dr. Doom. And so people were dressed up as, as other, as some of the X-Men were, I think, in there as well. Mm -hmm. So they were, they were paying, you know, tribute to some of these other characters. But then later on in the series, they actually had an episode with the Chameleon, I think it was. And he actually, you know, they, they brought in, um, <laughs> sounds like you're playing uh, Mario Brothers. They brought in, <laughs> they brought in um, you know, I think Submariner, again, Captain America, uh, who else was in that one? Anyways, uh, a lot of different characters. You did, or Doctor Strange, I think, was in there too. So that was pretty cool to see. And again, as a kid at that time, I wasn't reading comic books. I was kind of glancing through my brother's stash. So to see these characters on the on the small screen was kind of exciting. And when I finally got to collecting comics in, in, the, in the in the mid '80s, I had a kind of a sort of a knowledge of who these people were. But it was a lot more fun 
because I recognize them and I said, oh, I remember that guy. And I'd be more interested in reading up about them and following their storylines, right? Yeah, I mean, I had a similar trajectory. I mean, without those cartoons, without seeing uh, the original 60s Spider-Man in, uh, on TV in the 80s, I would never have been collecting uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, mid 90s. So, I mean, those were definitely gateways. And, and for Spider-Man specifically, I mean, like you said, it, it, it always brought in all the other characters. So, I mean, you felt like this was a bigger world than, say, you know, Batman, which was amazing, but mm -hmm. it didn't really go beyond Batman. And same thing with Superman, didn't really go beyond Superman. But, you know, Spider-Man just, uh, you know, you would have episodes with Captain America and you would have episodes of the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. And it's, it's just, it talked about a bigger universe and it just expanded, you know, what's what's there. Well, and that, that kind of went hand in hand with Spider-Man, though, you know, with Marvel Team-Up. But being one of the more popular mm -hmm. uh, comic books of the 80s was the Marvel Team-Up. I know, I know the thing had Marvel 2-in-1, but... Let's, let's face it, everyone loved that, the team-ups, you know, and, and, and uh, even in his own title, Spider-Man was continuously running into other characters, you know, and um, yeah, he's a, he's the focal point of uh, the Marvel Universe. Everyone crosses into Spider-Man. He's the everyman that gets to see, you know, the street level and the cosmic level. That's right. Now, you mentioned Tom Holland. Why Tom Holland over Andrew Garfield <laughs> over, over Tobey Maguire? I, I like them all. They're the... They each kind of um, bring something I like, but why Tom Holland as your favorite? Uh, I, I like you said they they all brought, you know, they all bring something very good to Spider Man. But I think Tom Holland and the manner in which uh, the MCU has been dealing with Spider Man is much more true to the character. Uh, is a lot younger. Um, the other characters, the other two actors, well, really good actors. They didn't really feel. Like they were Spider Man. I mean, you're looking at Tobey Maguire in his his mid twenties, late twenties, playing a high schooler, and it just didn't feel right. And you have to remember, it came out at a time where, you know, we're still very new in CG, so a lot of it kind of, you know, you go back to it, it doesn't look as great. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I just don't have a lot of nostalgia for for that for some reason. Um, uh, the Andrew Garfield stuff was interesting, but they didn't make him didn't really make him how can i say this like peter parker's always kind of a loser in a way I, even though you know as, as, as great as he is i didn't get that feeling from uh from the andrew Gar garfield he's a really cool guy and he came off as a really cool guy tom holland comes off as a little bit messy um you know not not quite as as you know hunky as as, as, as the spider-man persona so i mean it's just it's just a great um uh, dichotomy between his secret identity and, and who tom holland is as peter parker interesting yeah i you know i uh, again I, I have problems i had problems with, with toby because i didn't like the i didn't like the web shooters not being there I was a part of his lower his his, his uh, origin i really thought, I'll put it in there it makes shows how smart he is you know and, and they didn't do it and then i didn't like i didn't like andrew garfield at all which is kind of interesting and it wasn't until funny enough i wasn't andrew garfield was not my most uh, my most liked one, but until I saw No Way Home, and when he came out, I was more most excited to see Andrew Garfield over any of them. And I don't know if that's me just becoming more of a Andrew Garfield uh, uh, fanboy because I've seen him in so many other things now. You know, uh, you know, Tick Tick Boom. Have you ever seen Tick Tick Boom? It's an amazing. Uh, no, I haven't. But I, I get where you're coming from. I mean, I liked Andrew yeah. Garfield in uh, in No Way Home. Uh, it was. It was almost a redemption of the character. Yeah. And you see, like, he's so down and, you know, it almost reflects how the fans felt about the movie itself. Yeah. So it's you a know? redemption of who he is, which is really great. Really, really smart but for the, how they did that. But then me, but, but also seeing him as an actor grow since that time and do other mm -hmm. roles that I've really come to, you know, Hacksaw. Oh, Rings, no, yeah. He's, you know? he's I, amazing, I, yeah. I, I love him. I love I love it. I'll go see anything Andrew Garfield's in. I really do. I really do like him. Um, and so I was really excited to see it. But hey, Tom Holland's been a great, a great addition as well, uh, for sure. Um, I think uh, I'll read some of the guys are saying here. Um, Brian Bowman says, Spider-Man's original animation series, uh, the animation was done in the U.S. and the voice acting was in Canada. That makes sense, at least that part of it, because I know that gentleman was uh, from Toronto. Peter says, the 90s show also significantly altered how the symbiote storyline was presented in all mediums going forward, the suit increasing Peter's aggression. Mm -hmm. And the bad hombre says, I got you all beat. None can beat Supad, Supada Man. 
uh, now, <laughs> from Japan. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, Supata Man is friggin' awesome. Yeah. It was if it's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, it's the one with the giant robot, I think, right? Okay, yeah, I think it is. But yeah. okay, my I remember I was like what six fifteen at the comic store, and and Ken Ken from Ken's Comics, who who passed away recently. Um, was a real Spider-Man fanboy too. And he says, Kevin, I got this video. You got to see it of Japanese Spider-Man and the way it's done. And so he brought me back to his place. He puts it in the VHS and there's this, you know, he's, he's crawling like spider, like a spider and he's jumping around. The acrobatics are awesome. Yeah. The whole, you know, the whole, you know, robot fighting kind of thing, you know, uh, guy, is it, what, what are they called? The, uh, Oh, the, uh, Sentai. Yeah. The and all that giant, kind of stuff. robots. Yeah. 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 I don't get that. But just the physicality, the way this actor portrayed Spider-Man was, and the way he, I know his, 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 um, even the way he flung his wrist, he was like, he was like, Wah-ka! you know, and it was really aggressive. And then the webs would shoot out yeah. for that time. It was an interesting, uh, portrayal of how, how he should be, uh, shown on screen physically. Cause we hadn't mm-hmm. gotten that. Um, the picture we have here of the 1970s one right here, this guy here, he just kind of walked around kind of. I don't know, it was, and he had a, he had his utility belt on the outside, you know, kind of mm-hmm. like Batman. And his web shooters were on the outside, and it was just yeah, the nineteen seventies show didn't do very well at all. I think it lasted a season tops. I don't think it did more. I'm I'm that. curious if anyone got into Spider Man through Italian Spider Man. Italian Spider Man. <laughs> it, it's a spoof. It's not it's not real, but it's a uh, definitely a spoof, which is really hilarious. I, I suggest you look it up. Okay, I'll but it's, for it's sure. pretty funny. Um, yeah. So you know. We're gonna. It's gonna. It's just gonna keep going, though, right? It's never gonna end. Now we have all these, and, and that's funny. You see the uh, image over here of all the um, the multiversal Spider-Man, the different, you know, Ben Riley and the, you know, all of them. Uh, it, 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 the sky's the limit now. And even with um, uh, Into the Spider Verse, we're seeing all these versions of Spider-Man. Yep. I mean, they could go anywhere with this now. Um, well, one of the smartest things I think Marvel has done was introduce Miles Morales. I mean, you can have. Peter grow up and you can still have what you love about Spider-Man and Miles. And I think that really revitalized the character um, much more than people originally thought at the time. I think a lot of people in the early 2000s didn't know where Spider-Man was going. And, you know, you had him, you know, be an adult, have a family, you know, own a company. It just didn't feel like Spider-Man. You can never really go back. And they were trying to go forward with it. So Miles has just been a breath of fresh air to the franchise itself. Now, again, I should be be ashamed of myself for not knowing this. But again, I don't read modern books. I just don't. Mm -hmm. And so it's my understanding, though, Miles is not from the same universe as Parker, though, right? No, he okay. is originally from the Ultimate Universe, but right. he does get transported into the six one six. Oh, he does. So he is he is in the six one six. Yeah. All right. So you got Spider Man and uh, his sidekick now, basically in a way. In a no, way. no, no. Oh. They're not. They're no. Don't call him a sidekick. Well, they do not like. They do. Uh, they, they don't do the whole sidekick thing. They no? are. They are Spider Man. They're Spider Man side by side. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, geez, you know. <laughs> well, he has his own book. Anybody. He he has his own book. He, it's Miles Morales Spider Man. Yeah, Robin had his own book too, but I still call Robin a sidekick. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Well, that's cool. No, I agree. I think that the youth of Spider Man is very important. That youthfulness and the problems he has as a kid would face. But you know, there's only mm-hmm. so long you can do that for. And one day Miles exactly. will grow up too, and then we'll have to find another one. I guess it'll be a, a, a... which I think is an interesting trajectory for comics as a whole. It's that you've seen how successful you can be by not getting rid of the character, but adding on someone who can take on that role and still have the original character. I mean, for me, I don't like what DC does with the whole rebooting. Uh, this idea that Marvel has tried with a couple of their characters, a couple of their franchises, of adding on new characters that take on the role but still have the original people there, I think is an interesting way for comics to to grow and expand. And I'm hoping that would, you know, keep the the, the genre alive. Well, the DC, I, I don't love the CW stuff, but they kind of did that with Flash a bit too, right? They kind of had the Barry mm-hmm. Allen Flash, and then they had the uh, Golden Age Flash show up. Um, yep. you know, which was kind of cool. Uh, pay, you know, I, I think they were from a different universe again, but, and they were in the, in the DC, in the DC, they were too, were they not? They were, they used to come over the two worlds every year with it. We come together, right. With DC, I think. 
Um, well, I mean, they've had their crises, which has yes. literally rebooted the universe, and then you had New 52, and then all over and over again, because, you know, you can't do the same thing so many times, right? Well, that's just it. I think it has to, you have to keep, you have to go back and, I think rebooting is good sometimes. You have to kind of mm-hmm. go back and start from scratch for a new audience, but um, I don't know, uh, who knows where, where the trajectory of comics are going anyways, right? Uh, we've had that conversation too, it's, is it going to stay... True. Uh, electronic is it going to be uh you know in the form of as we know it as a comic book is that gonna is that a dying uh medium is it gonna go the way the dodo bird well every time i'm told we're a paper society i have two more papers to find so yeah yeah i, I again i wish i'd go back to newsprint i love newsprint anyways oh yes yeah I, I i completely agree i think uh the new paper doesn't uh feel as nice as the, the old newsprint does the smell is good and no. uh it's damn expensive mm-hmm I bought a comic, cost me seven bucks the other day for a comic book. I'm like, what? Oh my! <laughs> it was an independent book, so maybe that's why. But it was like seven dollars. Ah, like, holy shit! Yeah. No, it's still for three ninety nine, four ninety nine, five ninety nine. That's kind of the standard. Yeah, so that's not, not cheap. Not like it used to be. No, that's for sure. Well, listen, Marco. Thanks for popping by and giving us your two cents worth on this. But no problem. Anytime. Yeah. Uh, again, guys, what are your? Who are your? Some of your favorite uh, Spider Man. Uh, uh, iterations. Let us know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear. Again, Marco, thanks so much. We'll see you at the shop sometime soon. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Have a good night. You too. Good night. Bye now. All right. Thanks to Marco for popping by and uh, helping us out with this question. Who is your favorite Superman? Again, Amazing Fantasy 15 back from CGC. We're going to keep on going here. Uh, we're going to go over to DC now. We're going to have uh, a Showcase 83. And this one here is in a 9.6. It's a nice grade. Don't see that too often in one of these books. We have um, also a New Gods, number one, in an 8.0. We have a another Showcase 84. Uh, and this one is in a 7.5. When the stack is too high, guys, I'll go over to the chat room if you haven't gone there already. If you, if you haven't said hello, come on, say hello. Let me know where you're, where you're watching from. If you're new here, say hello. Uh, we got a 9.6 for Roger Wilco, number one, right there. And we have, oh, hit the microphone, sorry. Roger Wilco, number two, in a 9.6. And last but not least, a Roger Wilco, number three, in a 9.4. Can you see that? There we go. Okay. Let me pack these babies away. I'll go back to the chat room. If I can find it. Chat window. There it is. All right. So again, um, excuse me. Big grats to uh, Carlo. That's right. ASM 300 with a, with a lovely 9.8. Joey uh, Lane says, hey, Kevin, everyone, excited for the unboxing today. Glad you're here, Joey. Good seeing you. Carlos happy. Hit hard for the cutout. We're going to get it again, my friend. We're going to get the next one, too. We're going to get a 9-8. Uh, Adam Donnelly's here. Hey, Adam, how's it going? If you guys were watching last week and we had all those, we had those 398s. It was a 266. And it was the Days of Future Past, uh, 141, 142 of X-Men. Those were Adam's. Those were Adam's books. So he was quite happy to pick those up on Saturday at the shop. Uh, Carlos, ASM 3098 is for sale when some, if someone is interested. So there you go, guys. Carlo is selling this lovely copy of ASM 300. So if you're looking for one, hit him up. Uh, Peter Hurd, I will own an AF-15 before I die, and I don't doubt it. I do not doubt it. Where there's a will, there is a way. You will own one of these one day. Look how nice that is, though. For a, look, check that out. That's not a two, right? Like that's, it's a gorgeous copy. No tape, no nothing. The nicest looking two you're going to find, I'll tell you. Anyways, or one of the nicest looking twos. Okay. Peter says, hot take. Jake Johnson, Peter B. Parker is everything Spider-Man should be. 
Which one is that? Peter, uh, who's Jake Johnson's p- Parker? Brian Bowman, Spider-Man original animation series was done in the... Okay, we did that already. Okay, and then Bad Ombre talked about the uh, Japanese Spider-Man. 49 Felix, how you doing? Sean Connolly's here as well. How are you? Howdy back to you. Jo- J- Jay Bofet, how's it going, Doc? Cheers from New Hampshire. Ah, all the way from New Hampshire. Welcome. Welcome, my friend. I hope you're enjoying this unboxing. All right, we've got... I've got a whole other box with you guys. We're not even not even halfway through box number one. Let's get the next batch of books up here. I have a feeling these some of these are uh, Dave L's because Dave L always has so many Star Wars books that I'm thinking these are his. So we start off with, and I have to watch and check these slabs for cracks very carefully. The other day, um, uh, Cameron came in. He saw. He saw a little minor crack right by the seam, that little seam area there. It was a little, but it was inside the slab. You couldn't feel the crack on the outside. It was not a big crack, but it was very hard to see. Um, and I, I don't think CGC is going to fix that. I, I just don't. I, I, they, they've already said that if it's inside uh, and there's a micro crack, that that's kind of what the way the slabs are going to be. But nonetheless, I'm trying to catch those if I can. Next, we've got a Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, number 31, and a 9.8. Then we got a Clone Wars, number 1. First appearance of Ahsoka Tano, and a 9.6. we got a Dazzler, number 1. Been seeing this book coming in a little more often. Uh, 9.8. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Center of that baby right there. Again, guys, hit the subscribe button. Join the conversation. Again, if you're new here, I want to know where you're, where you're watching from. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have Jabo Fett uh, all the way from New Hampshire. Let me know where you are watching from, guys. I'd love to know. Uh, we have Incredible Hulk number four, variant edition, in a 9.6. We have... Oh, wow. I'm so happy this got a 9.8. Guys, Fear Itself... Number two in a 9.8. Go over to my Instagram page. Napur pressed this one, guys. And there's before and after pictures of this. And you're going to see that had had it been sent in um, without the press, yeah, uh, that's the one, it, it would have gotten like a 9.4, 9.2. Good job, Napur. Wonderful. 9.8 achieved. First appearance of Shang-Chi in a 9.0. Oh, sorry. No, this is the second appearance of Shang-Chi. What am I talking about? No, this is first appearance. Wait. Yeah, second appearance. First appearance of death. But it's not. It's the second appearance of uh, of Shang-Chi. Number 15 is the first appearance. Brian Bowman actually confirmed something here. I asked CGC support about internal cracks. They said, no, they won't fix. And that's what I thought. But... You know, it's, it's, it is the way it is. They had to draw the line somewhere, um, you know, unfortunately. Uh, nice Deal Republic, number nine, and a 9.8. So, got a, quite a few nice 9.8s here. Right there. Uh, stack's kind of high. Let's go back over to the uh, chat as I, as I get rid of these guys. Uh, Elias White says, what do you think of Taylor Swift possibly playing the Dazzler in Deadpool number three? Well, I've talked about this a couple of times before. Um, hey man. Yeah, sure. I suppose it looks like, it looks like she's going to be in there in some way, shape or form. Now, whether it's going to be Dazzler or some other character, I mean, Dazzler is the perfect, the perfect one for her. Obviously Uh, I'm going to say there's like a. 85 to 90 percent chance we're going to see her now is she going to be dazzler look, look at i don't want to see dazzler as a well i guess we're going to see a lot of cameos let's face it this movie is going to be chock full of cameos if you like cameos deadpool 3 is going to be the movie for you so will we get tons and tons of dazzler cameos i doubt it will she be in it for 20 30 40 seconds like a quick you know concert scene with her singing or something yeah it's probably going to be something like that I doubt we're going to see Dazzler in action, you know. Um, but yeah, I think so. There's been a lot of 
a lot of um, people, you know, speculating that and a, little, a lot of little clues and even from the actors involved, you know, a lot of hanging out with each other and, you know, um, so yeah, I, I think so. And it kind of makes sense. All right. What do you think? Do you think, Eliza, she's going to be in there? I think she is. We've got a Daredevil number four. Uh, first Purple Man in a 4.0. We've got an, oh, these are the rest of uh, another Cameron's books. Uh, Hero for Hire number one, and this is a Danish edition and a 6.5. Check that cover out. I haven't seen that before. I guarantee it. we got a Batman New 52 number two. First appearance of William Cobb as Talon in a 9.8. We've got a copy of Amazing Spider-Man 25, uh, version edition of Comics Exposure. This is a nice comic. Why did this only get a 9.2? Well, the back's got some scuffing, I guess. And that's uh, 9.2, heavy book. Wow, 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 yes, look at this. Gorgeous copy. Copy I am interested in. Very nice. Tales of Suspense, 52, first appearance of the Black Widow. Daddy needs this book. It's one of the ones I need. That's a nice copy, 8.0, nothing wrong with that. We got also an 8.5 copy. Oh, my Lord, look what's coming up. Look what's coming up. Wow, 8.5 copy, Ghost Rider, Marvel Spotlight, number 5, 8.5, nice grade. We're not done yet, my friends. We're not done yet. Holy cow, Lord Thoth is here. It's a Tuesday night. What's he doing here? It's March break, that's why. Okay, guys, this one's good. This had a lot of issues, this book. And we cleaned it right up. So happy to see. 9.0 Silver Surfer number four classic. Thor versus the Silver Surfer cover in a 9.0. Man, you can't beat that. That's gorgeous. Very happy about that. Uh, Brian says hi with or hey with Marvel's penchant for alter alternative casting. I wouldn't put it past them to ca <laughs> to cast RuPaul as Dazzler. Oh man, I hope not. I hope not. I could barely handle watching RuPaul on that show that she has. What's it called? Uh, is it top the top model? My wife and daughter watch it. He's ugh, it's too much. Uh, next, we have a 9.6 X-Men Annual 14. And we have also, finally in this box, X-Men number 133 and 8.5. Amazing X-Men cop issue right there. Great John Byrne cover. That's it. That's it for this box. But don't go anywhere. I have another box. I'm going to pack these babies up, and I'll get back to it. All right, let's go over to the uh, chat room again. Um, so Lord Thoth is here. Wouldn't that be a plot twist? It should, sure would be. <laughs> I was right, Lord Thoth. I was right. Elias says, I think she's in there too. Not too thrilled for her though. Not exactly a swell. Who is, man? Well, sure, who is? A lot of people are. We're not. I don't think most of us are Swifties. Um, you know. It's like that She-Hulk when they had that, that whole twerking thing with that. I didn't even know who that woman was. I had no clue who that singer or that performer was who was twerking with the She-Hulk. I, I, I didn't understand why they put that in there. Did they think that was going to boost their ratings? Uh, that, 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 that demographic was going to tune in? Come on now. Mike says, I need that surfer to finish my 1 than 25 run. It might be for sale, Mike. I, I think a lot of those are. That's why I was kind of really excited about that uh, number 52 because I think, if I remember correctly, the owner is wanting to sell those. So I might have to get in on that. Uh, Lord Thaw says, glad I could be here. Sad I miss you. Like me too. Uh, it's nice to have you present. It's nice that you're here this week. Had I known that Tuesdays was such a bad night for you, I may not have done Tuesday nights. Maybe I'll change it one day. We'll see. Tuesdays have has been pretty good, though. It gives my daughter enough time to uh, get these suckers organized for, for uh, Saturday pickups. Uh, J-Bo says, wasn't that Dazzler and Dark Phoenix when they were partying in the woods drinking? 
I saw Dark Phoenix. Um, did not pay attention much to Dark Phoenix. But you know what? That rings a bell, what you just said there. It probably was. It probably was her. It probably was her. Um, just not official. It wasn't officially her, right? They did that with a lot of characters. Oh, they'll introduce somebody, but they won't actually mention their names. So, all right. There you go. Box number one. Here are all the invoices for that. These babies, again, guys, if you see your books here, well, that's fantastic. Don't book an appointment to pick up until I text you, please. Uh, these go from here. My daughter then takes them. She sorts through all these invoices and correlates them and matches them up with your invoices. And then once your complete order is done, that is, if you have more than one uh, tier, sometimes one tier will come in while we're still waiting for another. But once all of your books are in, I will text you and you can make an appointment to come and see me. Or if you prefer, I can mail the books back to you if you prefer. Of course, there's an additional charge for that. But I'm happy to do it if that is what you wish. All right, let's move this baby out of the way. Let's get box number de in here. That's French, guys. It's French. Because I'm so good at French. Not. All right. Again, I have no idea. Oh, my goodness. Starting off with a banger. <laughs> I don't know if it's a banger, but it's a pretty cool book. You don't see a 9-8 very often. And I don't know if they're... No, I don't think it's a pre-screen. Wow. Wow. I think I've seen one of these in a 9-8 uh, not too long ago, but not very often. Check this out. Again, is, is it a banger? I don't know. You tell me if it's a banger. But again, I love when the first book of the box is a 9-8. Bang. Here we go. Joker number one, 9.8. White pager. Got to check these slabs. Got to check these slabs. Uh, it's followed by 9.6 of the exact same book. Okay, this book got crucified. I want to see why. What the hell? All right, look at this. Six. Okay, I don't understand why this book is so low. There's got to be something going on that I'm... Anyway, 6.5... It's hard to see. Listen, it's hard to see through the slab right away. I have to. I have to look very carefully. My guess is there is something on this cover, back or front, that like a crease that was flattened out, but the line is still there, and it's hard to see. That could cause this book. It looks great. It looks fantastic, but it could cause this book. Uh, cause this book. Sorry, to really get hit hard. I've seen it happen before. All right. Moving right along, we've got a Hulk 180 and a 4.0. We have a Silver Surfer number one and a 5.5. If you're just getting here now, guys, please consider hitting that to subscribe button, join the conversation. Again, let me know where you're, uh, where you're watching from. Only one person, only Elias has spoken up and said where he's, where he's, was it Elias? No, it wasn't Elias. It was Jay, uh, Jay Bofet. Let me know that he was uh, uh, watching from, from New Hampshire. Any other, uh, anybody else south of the border watching the show? Let me know. All right. A couple more nine eights coming your way, my friend. Four, three, three, seven. Uh, this is a direct edition and a 9.8. We also have, okay, the three in a row. Tales of the Teen Titans, number 44. First appearance of uh, of Nightwing, and it's been squashed in there. It's a 9-8, but not, look at that. Look at that. See that? The hell, man. It's a 9-8. They need to come up with a slab or inner well that does not... F the book up. <laughs> okay, because, look, they're grading the books. Their books come to them. They grade the book. The book probably goes into a tray and it goes on to be encapsulated. It's during that encapsulation process where I think garbage like this happens, where the whole, it looks like donkey shit. No offense. I hate using that language, but, like, come on, guys. Another 9-8 here. This one looks better. 
Nine eight white pager, She Hulk number one. Got a nine six copy of um, Amazing Spider Man two thirty eight. Right there. My my uh, my stack is high, so I'm going to go back to. Uh, I'll do one more like this. Oh, the, okay. I'll hold off. If you like Green Lantern, Silver Age Green Lantern. These are Leslie's books. The second half of his, his order. Don't go anywhere. I got a ton of Green Lantern, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, in fact, the rest of this box is Silver Age Green Lantern. If you're a fan of Hal Jordan, don't go anywhere. Because I got a whole, probably like almost like five, about 15 Green Lantern Silver Age books here. Let's go back to the chat room while I put these babies away. Um, actually, I can go like this. I can kind of, you can see them again as I go backwards here. Um Lord Thoth is putting together a handful of comics to drop off to you next time Lady Thoth and I are in your direction. So far, I have seven. Excellent, Lord Thoth. I look forward to meeting you in person. Uh, Mike Evans, top is... No, no, it wouldn't be trimmed. It wouldn't be trimmed. Uh, if it was trimmed, it'd be purple label. Uh, bad printing, probably not. I, I'm pretty sure uh, it probably has a bend of some kind. I will find out at some point. Um... Marco, Marco is just here, guys. We were talking about the best iterations of Spider-Man. Uh, if you haven't, if you didn't catch that, go back to the beginning and watch the video all over again. He's here right now, and he's saying, "Don't forget to hit that like button." I'd have to agree with Marco. Don't forget to hit that like button. It does help us here in the analytics. <sighs> Holy cow! I'm eyeballing all those Green Lanterns. They're pretty much all mid mid grade books, but they're still cool books you don't see very often. <laughs> Donkey poop. There you go. LOL. Wonder if my uh, Shulky number one would come back uh, a nine point eight. She Hulky. Uh, don't know. I could give you my advice when I see it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to see what's going on with this book. I guarantee it's got some kind of a. Oh, what the hell is that? First of all. Hmm. Here, if somebody wants to do it, catch this. Someone use your phone and grab that QR code. Does that work? Let's see if I can get it to focus on the QR code. See if you can see what the graders notes are. I see something in there that shouldn't be there, but very frustrating. Very frustrating. Lord Thought says, yes, Green Lantern is my favorite. Well, then don't go anywhere. Silver Age Green Lantern coming right up. Whew. Did you guys see all the books I'm working on currently? Well, some of the books we're working on currently. Oh, by the way, we are now into January. We're still finishing up some December bigger orders, but we actually cracked the January uh, date. We are, now into, uh, we are now into January books as well. So we're getting there, my friends. We're getting there. Turnaround time, February, March. Yeah, we're about two and a half month turnaround right now for pressing, which is fantastic. So the whole shebang, pressing, cleaning, and grading is about probably three, three and a half months right now. It's the shortest it's ever been. And subs are coming in like crazy, which is fantastic. So thanks, everybody, who are submitting. And by the way, a public service announcement. Announcement. I announced this last week. I'll announce it again today. I have not put it up on my website as of yet because um, because I just haven't had time. I'll try to do it this week. But essentially, guys, you know, I just, I'm going to try this out. It's going to be me for the next several months I'm going to do this. If you live outside of the GTA, the GTA is the greater Toronto area. So if you are not within driving distance, and I, guys, I get guys driving to see me from all over the GTA for, from two hours north south. Not south, to be in the lake, but north, east, and west of me, coming in every Saturday to see me. So, uh, you know, that's two hours. But essentially, if you submit an order of a, a pressing order of three hundred dollars or more, and that's basically ten books under the uh, exclusive press and clean uh, tier, and you are not within driving distance, I will ship your books to me. I'll cover it. I'll for free. I'll cover it. So if you are in, uh, you know, uh, New Hampshire, right? 
<laughs> if you're in New Hampshire and you want to try the comic doctor out, but oh, I don't want to, you know, it's going to cost me a million bucks to send in my books. No, it won't. Because I'm going to pay for those books to come to me from where you are. The way that'll work is basically you go onto my website, you'll do a submission form. If your submission form exceeds the 300 or is 300 or more, and that's before taxes, by the way. And Americans, you don't pay taxes. Don't just ignore that part. But um, uh, when I get your order, uh, I'll, re- I'll basically return that email with uh, instructions. Uh, once you send me the uh, dimensions and weight and all the pertinence I need, I'll send you a shipping label via a PDF shipping label. Pro- label? Ladle. Label. Probably a PDF or probably through FedEx. And uh, you'll, you'll ship the books to me. There you go. Covered. I, I already did my first one last week uh, from Northern Ontario. One of my clients lives way, way north, like, like several hours north of me. North of, I think, North Bay. So I covered that for him. And it worked great. So again, if you have, if you're outside the GTA and you want to try out the Comic Doctor and you want, I mean, listen, if you just want to try a couple of books out, it's not that expensive to ship books anyway. But if you've got a bigger order, you want me to, and you want to get the books to me, I'll cover the shipping to me. All right. Um, Sam says, Silver Ridge Green Lantern, can't wait. Greater notes, crease full center of back. That's what it is then. I told you. Crease full center of back cover. I just couldn't see it. Let's see if I, uh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's one of those things that's hard to see. It's basically, there was a crease going right down the middle of this book, guys. And what happens is, yeah, we can get the crease. We can smooth that crease out. But, you know, it's like this. This is a good example. Look at this invoice. See how it's been bent? See that? I could press this book. I could, pre- I could press this piece of paper and smooth it right out. But even if I smooth it right out, you're always going to have a, the broken fibers. And that's what's happened with this book. And that's why they crucified the great. I, I figured it was something like that. Uh, thanks so much for uh, for looking up, uh, Marco. Brian says, Kevin, you're on January. Fantastic. Does that mean my little November order is already with CGC? Pretty quick, if that's the case. Uh, it should be. It should be. Um, I'd have to look. But I don't remember seeing any orders for you here, Brian. We'll have to talk about that. Um Marco, I'm not seeing this crease on the photos at CGC. Yeah, it's hard to see. You won't see it. I, I can barely see it within my hand. I had to tilt it a certain way to see it. But, it, but believe me, it, it is there. Uh, Ottawa, yeah, I'll do Ottawa. If it's if it exceeds, if it's, you know, if you give me 10, um, if it's 10 ex- exclusive press and cleans, I'll ship it from Ottawa as well. Anywhere that's not within driving distance, I will do um, for sure. J. Bo Fett says, uh, brother, I'd send books to you without question. And that's awesome. J- you're just doing that. Listen, uh, I want to try this out. Uh, and the main reason I can do this is because I use a, a great third party uh, shipping um, service that it, 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 it's, it's, it's affordable. It's not crazy, you know, so I'm going to give it a shot. And, and uh, but again, I have to have a minimum uh, submission order or I can't do it. But I want to try it out for a little while and see how that goes. Uh, Spiro, hey Kev, still waiting on a few books from when I submitted in September. Just wondering if it'll be much longer. Spiro, some of your books are here. Uh, if not all of them. I think I wrote to you, Spiro. I think I wrote, I texted you last week, I think, but I could be wrong. Let me continue because I've got friends here looking for Green Lantern. Well, you've come to the right place. These are not in any specific order. I'll pull out the first six or so. Get ready for some Green Lantern specials, my friend. Here we go. Spiro, send me a text later on. I'll check, okay? If I don't check tonight, I'll check tomorrow morning for you. But I could have swore yours were all back. All right, here we go. Green Lantern, number four. That's early Green Lantern book. We got a Green Lantern, number three. Now, Leslie's trying to put a full run together, and he's had these books for a long time. He is looking for, I think, two specific issues. I can't remember what they are offhand. Boy, these cleaned up pretty nice. Uh, Green Lantern number two, right there. He had a Green Lantern number one. It was a, it was a, uh, I think it was a resto label. It was a, uh, a reholder, which I would have shown about a month ago. We got a Green, uh, Green Arrow number eight. These are really early books. Says, Why is that only a three, oh, three, five? Yeah, this could have been a four. Right there. Green Arrow number five. We got two copies of this one. One is in a 6.5. Right there. Oops. 
And we have a green, another one in a 5.5, exact same book. Lauren says, Lady Thoth is from Scarborough and has a lot of family there. Would rather visit. Yeah, for sure. I want to meet you. If you're going to be in town, by all means, come on down. Come by the shop. I don't know what issues. I'll have to, I'll have to find out. Number 17 is, is ringing in my head, but I, I could be wrong. All right. All right, here we go. We have number 14 here. Again, guys, these were, these were, oh, actually, you know what? Let me pack these away first because I have no room to, to keep going. I'll go back to the chat room really quick. Actually, I'll leave these on there as I, as if no one's, no one's talking right now, but, uh, so we got 35 of you in the room right now. Uh, I assume you're all regulars because I've heard no one else say where else they are watching from. Ooh. And for those of you that come to the shop and like to buy toys, I've picked up some pretty cool stuff and um, will be available this Saturday. If anybody here is a fan of Big Jim, we're talking early 70s. I picked up a couple of Big Jim, uh, no action figures. They're hard to find. My gosh, all the Big Jim stuff's hard to find. I picked up um, a couple of Big Jim uh, vehicles, like campers, uh, which are pretty cool. Um so come on by and see that. I got some Ninja Turtle stuff, uh, some more some more Mego Star Trek stuff. I got a, a full Star Trek USS Enterprise uh, uh, play uh, play set, which is amazing. I love it. Yeah, I love Big Jim. I, I, again, Big Jim was a little towards the end of my you know they stopped making Big Jim in the late seventies, I think it was. Excuse me, but I inherited all my brother's Big Jim toys. And unfortunately, I don't have any left. They're all gone. All right, here we go. We got number 14, Green Lantern. We have a Green Lantern number 12. We have a Green Lantern number uh, 11. Making sure they sealed it properly here. We have a Green Lantern number 10. Awesome cover. Look at this one. This is the Green Lantern Oath. Second appearance of Sinestro and Green Lantern number 9. Here's a cool Sinestro appearance in Green Lantern number 18. And another Sinestro appearance in number 15. Yes, I, don't, I didn't see a 17. I think it is 17 he needs. I'm going to keep those there and just kind of... I'm going to show the rest of them right here, guys, so I don't have to... I don't have to do all the... Uh, here we go. We got a Green Lantern number 46. Right there. Then we've got a Green Lantern uh, number 41 with Star Sapphire. Nice copy and a 6.5. And then last but not least, first appearance of Jon Stewart. Green Lantern number 87. Green Lantern, Green Arrow, number 87. That back was pretty filthy. There it is right there. Pretty big book right now. Uh, Sean says, I had a big gym. Still have the pull talking backpack around. Yes, I, I, I remember those. Those are pretty cool. Uh, those Green Lantern books are so lovely. Yes, and, and you know, Sam, books, you do, again, we don't see them. We might see the odd one here and there. But again, Leslie is a huge Green Lantern fan, and uh, he came in with a stack of them. I want them all done. I've had them forever. He's still hunting down those two elusive ones. He will eventually have a full run of these. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool to see. Love the cover of GL46. Yeah, it is a pretty sick one. I think it's Gil. Is it? It's got a, it's got a pinup of Gil Kane on the inside as well. There it is right there with all the different Green Lantern core uh, members. Pretty cool. 
Brian says, love the older books. Huge fan of tonight's unboxing. Congrats to the owners. Yes, a big congrats to the owners. Some great books. Carlos says, hey, Lord Thoth, you ever in Scarborough, let me buy you a beer and chat comics. There you go. And Sean says, I'm from Guelph. Met you at the Toronto Con last month. Okay, Sean, yeah. That day went that day went by really fast, man. That day went really fast. Uh, I, I need to see you again, Sean. <laughs> to make, put the name to your face. Your, yeah, put the name to your face. That's right. Uh, there you go. Friendship's happening right here. Carlo and Lord Thoth going to get together and have a beer and talk comics. It's fantastic. Guys, thank you so, so much for coming by today. Joining in. If you just got here now, we did two unboxings, like two full CGC boxes. Plus, Marco and I uh, discussed relatively quickly some pretty fun iterations of Spider-Man given to us by Hollywood over the years. Which ones were our favorites and why? If you have a favorite uh, Spider-Man iteration, let us know in the, in the comment section below. If there are comics here in today's unboxing that you wish you had, uh, let us also know in the comment section below. Because by doing so, you never know who's watching. You might find a great copy that could be had. A lot of uh, our members here chat back and forth trade buy and sell from each other nothing wrong with that and carlo actually says anybody going to the comic con this week and that's right if you are in the toronto area we have the toronto comic con not the fan expo that's in the summertime in august uh but we have our comic con uh this i think it's friday saturday and sunday i will be there i'm supposed to be there friday night so if you see me tap me on the shoulder and say hello it'd be great to see you uh, and, uh, that's that you doing shop this time Saturday. Yes, I am going to be at the shop this Saturday from 11 till two. Uh, there might be a day in the near future. I have to close the shop down on Saturday. That might be having April the 4th might be a no go. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, oh no, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to the Toronto comic show on, on, um, comic con on Friday night. Opening at the shop on Saturday for sure. So if you're in the Oshawa area on Saturday morning, come on by and say hi. Uh, if you're at the Toronto Con this Friday night, keep your eye open. Say hello to me there. All right, guys, listen, that's it for me. I'm going to go watch the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the Equalizer Part 3. It's on, uh, I think it's on Netflix or Amazon or something like that. Me and Jack are going to sit down and watch that tonight. So until next Tuesday, because more books are on the way. That's right, more books are on the way. I did set another 200 books down. It's never ending, guys. Never ending. Um, we'll see you on Tuesday. All right, guys. Take so much. Take care. Have a great, if you're having a March break right now, have a great rest of your March break. And until next Tuesday, see you again right back here on the, on the Comic Doctor YouTube channel. Bye for now. Good night.